Well, you shared a little bit about the network and spoke a little bit about the ecosystem um, in 2017, 2018. Um, looking forward, next 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, how do you see um, the crypto ecosystem broadly evolving and, and what place would you see Decred having in that? Hard question. Um, I think that you know, for us right now, we're focused on developer tools and networks. And then um, for the, say, mainstream use cases, those being financial. Um, really, blockchains are natively financial technology that collapse the cost of asset creation, custody, and transfer. Um, and I would argue that a lot of the, say, more technology-geared crypto networks, their success is contingent upon us nailing the financial components um, and making this just much easier for, for users to onboard and use. Um, and so I, I'd like to think that, well, hopefully our investment focus will dovetail with, with where um, we're seeing real traction. Um, where does Decred fit within that? I think Decred has um, one of the most elegantly constructed supply sides in the whole industry um, where it's taken taking into account the hardware um, that performs consensus uh, through proof of work, the stakeholders that make decisions, and then also the code creators, which I, I, I consider a form of supply cider. Um, and it is compensating all of those supply ciders. And it's constructed a elegant system of checks and balances to make sure that no single supply cider can run away um, with, with the keys to the network and the control to the network. So I think there's a lot to be learned um, from that model, and generally when I have conversations with engineers um, and explain Decred supply side, um, they'll get excited um, and go and take learnings from it. Jake mentioned that Politea um, can easily be ported um, onto another blockchain. Potentially it gets extended through Decred itself, and Decred becomes a governance chain where people are um, anchoring their voting, um, money, and transparency decisions um, all through Decred. So I think, you know, it's more of an open slate in terms of how Decred may work in. Yeah, so from, from our perspective, a lot of what we end up thinking about and talking about internally, obviously we're, we're a venture capital fund, so we think you know, ten, on 10 year horizons typically. And so uh, that's very much how we think about the assets in our portfolio and very much what drives us to this idea of governance as a differentiator. And so for me, that's where Decred comes in in that I don't think standing here in 2018, we can pre-specify all the features or um, all the community aspects that will make a network like Decred successful. Really what we can do is we can specify the processes through which we can arrive at the right answers when those become apparent to us. So those things could be surrounding privacy, they could be surrounding you know, how networks uh, promote themselves, they could be any number of things. Um, really what we can do is specify the way in w uh, th the ways through which, as a community, we come together um, and decide on those things in a way that you know doesn't leave us kind of in the situation that Jake described, where we're debating simultaneously debating on what the right answer should be, and then also debating on how what process we should use to arrive at the answer. Because of course, right in, in that situation, let's say miners and stakers or miners and wallets disagree on how you should make a decision. Right, miners will say. Well, no, just leave the decision to whoever has the most hash power. Well, you know, potentially exchanges will say, leave a decision to whoever custodies the most coins at any given time, right? So we can't be having those debates. We need to specify the ways in which we're going to reach decisions a priori. And so I think that's something that's incredibly differentiating uh, for Decred in that they've created incredible clarity uh, around how the community will resolve disputes in the future. And then the other thing that comes to the 10-year thesis uh, for Decred is the way that they've specified the ability of the protocol to be um, to be sustainable. Um, so what happens to a lot of the protocol teams once the money runs out, right? Do, do we end up in a situation like what Jake described where he's building a full node implementation, uh, an alternative full node implementation for Bitcoin and not getting compensated? Or do we have mechanisms for those teams to sustainably fund themselves as they do so? So those are the things that I think really will differentiate Decred beyond the 24 month period uh, and into the decades to come.